Can we talk about Trump's picks for his cabinet? What's the goal here? To me, the common theme is Donald Trump has chosen people ready to go in and declare war on the agencies they lead. At public health, national defense, national intelligence, and the Justice Department, people tasked with going in and just start swinging. First, there's Tulsi Gabbard. That's his pick for director of national intelligence. She's a combat veteran, but with little to no experience in intelligence work. She's been critical of the so-called deep state. Now she gets to run it. She's raised eyebrows in Washington with a long history of positions consistent with Russia's. Then there's Matt Gates, Trump's pick for attorney general, who just resigned his seat as a Florida congressman. He used to practice law, but that's not why Trump picked him. Gates wants to investigate the investigators, to probe the people at the Justice Department who targeted Donald Trump. By the way, Gates himself has been investigated by that same Justice Department. He was never charged for allegedly sex trafficking a minor, illicit drug use, and accepting improper gifts. Allegations he's all denied. Then there's the Fox News anchor, Pete Hegseth. He's been chosen to lead the Department of Defense. He is a veteran. He's also written a book blasting the Department of Defense for being too woke, for allowing women in combat, which he opposes, for following the Geneva Conventions against torture. Then there's the most eyebrow-raising pick of all, Robert F. Kennedy, vaccine skeptic, deep, long-standing critic of the U.S. health bureaucracy, now being asked to lead the U.S. health bureaucracy. And then what picks affects Canada the most? Well, all of them in theory, but there's Trump's pick for national security security advisor, Mike Waltz, who over the years on his social media feed has been aggressively critical of the Trudeau government. He once posted a video on his feed of Pierre Polyev, Canada's opposition leader, celebrating that this man might someday be rid Canada of Trudeau. And then there's the so-called border czar, who's called the northern border with Canada a serious national security issue, a terrorism threat. This is a team with a mandate, a mandate to fight, to fight the departments that they've criticized. And I guess that's why these picks seem surprising to some people. So will they actually get approved? Well, that's the question. Will Trump bypass normal procedures to put these people in office? So normally they need approval from the Senate, but Trump is looking for the power to shut down the Senate in early January so that they can all be installed through what are called recess appointments. Now this tactic has been used hundreds of times over the generations with an important caveat. It's supposed to be used in emergencies, not systematically. Also, the practice has fallen into disuse since the Supreme Court a decade ago set limits on Barack Obama. That doesn't mean Trump won't get away with it. So this team, the one you're looking at, this could be Trump's team.